Hello and a very warm welcome. This is World Business Report. I'm Sally Bundock. Also in the programme, Tata Steel is said to be poised to announce the, uh, the loss of over a thousand jobs in the UK later this morning. We'll have more on that in just a moment. Let's st start though with Iran's President Hassan Rouhani calling it an economic turning point as sanctions over its nuclear programme are lifted. He said it's time for the country to build and grow, promising that this year will be a prosperous one for Iran. Mr. Rouhani said his country needs up to $50 billion in foreign investment per year to reach its ultimate goal of 8% annual growth. Now, it's a new beginning at an ideal time because Iran could be seen as one of the largest untapped markets and it has a very youthful uh, population. The economic dividend for Iran and its potential business partners, therefore, is huge. The US estimates that more than $100 billion of funds could be unblocked. The oil and gas industry, banking sector, transport, tourism are services that will likely benefit from foreign investment Here's more detail. So that gives you a bit of background. For more analysis, I'm joined by Azadeh Muskarian, who's head of the Iran desk at the International Sanctions Specialist site, Walla. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank so it, it truly is a historic uh, moment for Iran. There's no doubt about that. From your perspective, uh, just talk us through what this means for this country. Thinking quite a bit. How quickly can Iran boost its output, presumably fairly quickly? Hmm. From the point of view of that, that young population that's sophisticated, that presumably wants to consume a lot of goods hmm. uh, made in the West and, and in the Far East as well, uh, how quickly will that take place, i.e. is the legal framework in place hmm. for foreign companies to just come hmm. in and sell goods, etc. As a day, fascinating to talk to you. Thank you so much uh, for coming in. And as you were hearing from Adnan earlier, uh, the US has imposed new sanctions over a missile test. That's uh, to do with another aspect, not, nothing to do with the nuclear program. It's to do with the ballistic missile testing. So a separate issue altogether. But let's now talk about Taiwan, which has just elected its first female president. 59-year-old Tsai Ing-wen is a former law professor who now faces a lot of challenges, including whether the island should get even closer to China, its main trading partner. So can she revitalise the island's flagging economy? Rico Hizon is Rico. Good to see you. Now let's mention another story that's very uh, paramount in the UK. So let's look at financial markets. So much activity over the weekend following the news of the lifting of sanctions against Iran. The price of oil sunk. No big surprise about that at all. A price now hovering above Brent crude, above $28 a barrel around that mark but at one point it was $27.67 a barrel so markets much much lower the yen strengthening that's hurting uh, Japan just to say the markets in the US Wall Street will be closed for a public holiday today it's Martin Luther King Day today so no action there but of course Wall Street had a 2% loss across the board on Friday so it's expected to be another torrid day for markets as we start a new business week I will see you soon as we look through the papers Let's start with East and West rapprochement, we can call it, I think. Mm -hmm. Middle East uh, stock markets in turmoil yesterday because of the lifting of these sanctions on Iran. Uh, the Independent has uh, this story and it says the price of oil could fall to its lowest level in decades if the Iranians unleash a new wave onto what's already a flooded market. Iran already sells, sells oil to China, but there could be further economic cooperation between the two countries. After Chinese President Xi Jinping re visits the region this week, the South China Morning Post is looking at that trip. The Guardian's financial pages have a report from Oxfam which says the world's richest 62 people now control as much wealth as the poorest 50 percent on our planet. The World Economic Forum in Davos takes place this week. Optimism in the financial services industry fell in the last few months of last year. According to the Independence Business Pages, it has a poll by the Confederation of British Industry. Gulf News reporting on a UN proposal that football games should be taxed to help raise $40 billion a year for humanitarian relief. It says Islamic financiers could also be asked to donate. And sugary food and drinks are going to cost more in hospitals across the UK. The NHS has decided to introduce its own sugar tax to try and tackle the issue of obesity. That is in The Guardian. Cornelia Myers here this morning, CEO of the business consultancy MRL Corporation. You know who she is. <laughs> nice to see Good you, morning, Cornelia. Cornelia. Good morning. People in Iran don't seem to be too 
overjoyed, shall we say. Obviously, the politicians are, but the people are saying, look, we've lived under these sanctions for so long. We're not going to just go nuts at the moment because our lives may not change as much as many are saying. No, I don't think. I think what, what happened is in, in April and in summer, you know, when, when really the negotiations came through, then they were overjoyed. They yeah. were jubilant. They were in the streets. So now, they were, they were happy, in the streets. Right? They were happy. So now it's just, you know, now they've just, the, the government has walked the talk and now what they were jubilant about has happened. So now they're, they're, they're hunkering down and starting to get on with business. But how soon will business get on, as well, it were? Well, I think when we, when we look at oil, first of all, and that that's also was, you know, the, the traders were worried. We saw how low the oil price went. They have 4 million barrels in floating storage. So they will, over the next eight months, probably release 500,000 barrels a month. Then after that, in order they want to up their production by a million barrels. That's about 20 to 30 percent of the production. That will not happen overnight because the sector is woefully underinvested. But they're doing all their best. And you see, you will see oil companies, oil field service companies, pump providers and so on go in there. But you will also see people in the banking sector. Well, interesting, Mr. Rouhani's speech yesterday, his, uh, his big speech, he spoke a lot about the financial sector. He didn't really touch on the oil sector. But when you, but before we move on from oil, I mean, the Independence uh, article says this is an all-out oil war between uh, Middle Eastern rivals. Do you see it that way? No, I, I see it as there is everybody's pumping as they can, as much as they can, because they have, they want to preserve market share. Um, and but it's not just it's just not, not just the OPEC countries. Russia is in there as well. We have shale production, so everybody is producing. So it's not obviously OPEC will now have to accommodate increased production from Iran. They will also have to accommodate in, um, Indonesia has just come back in. They will have to accommodate that. And you saw in the last December meeting where I was, um, they didn't for the first time ever put a production ceiling in place just because of the uncertainty of how quickly it would ramp up and, and shake through the system. This is a great line. The United States has just released $400 million that they had frozen in 1979 yeah. when the Islamic Revolution happened. It was uh, a hedge fund, I think, that they had frozen. And they've also repaid the Iranians $1.3 billion in interest on that $400 million. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Could this have happened without President Rouhani? And how much will he now be wooing President Xi Jinping when the Chinese president oh, arrives? She, she, they will be wooing each other. It probably couldn't have happened without him because he and his foreign minister were just very good interlocutors. And then you had Kerry as well. I think you also needed somebody who is as level-headed and calm as Kerry on the, on the American John side. Kerry, John yeah. Kerry, the, the, the American. So, so I think that helped. And then you had the EU, so that helped. There was a lot of goodwill. Xi Jinping that will be very important but the, the, the Chinese are doing a very uh, doing it very cleverly they make sure they get on with Iran they also make sure they keep on getting along with 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 KSA with the kingdom with Saudi Arabia you see that he after um, Tehran he's going to go to Riyadh so so they're, they're they're playing it cleverly but look uh, during the sanctions um, China was one of the the, 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 the few countries that, that Iran could could export to and Iran is Iran is actually um, China Iran um, China is very interested in that part of the world and in getting especially also gas from that part of the world too it's not just about oil let's not forget the um, Iran has has the second largest gas reserves in the world we shall talk some more about this, I know, as, as the days and weeks progress. But let's now look, look at the World Economic Forum. You are going to Davos uh, later this week. And as ever, various NGOs come out with stark mm. uh, evidence to show about the growing inequality gap. Oxfam, 12 months ago, came out with this evidence and it said in 12 months' time it'll be worse and today's report shows it is worse. It is worse and I, I, you have to give the World Economic Forum actually some, some, some credence for this because about two um, general meetings ago, about two years ago, the, the big theme was the, in, the disparity of, of income gap, of wealth gap. And this is really a big thing for, for, for you know, a big problem for the world. It, it cannot be that 62 people own as much as 50% of the it's of incredible. the poorest. I think, look there, it says wealth of top 1% equal to the other 99%. It's on the screen right now. And 
It's it's you something. You can read it again and again and again. It's something, but it's it's, it's not just shocking. it's not just about people. It's also about countries. I mean, some countries are so rich, and then other countries have nothing. So so so. But there needs to be me, some transfer of. There does well, need to be some transfer, and I think with these with these reports that come out, you kind of think, yeah, it's shocking, it's terrible, but actually, how do you how do you fix it? How do you change it? And one of the elements in the report from Oxfam this time looks at the fact that some of those very wealthy individuals who uh, have lots of assets in tax havens, therefore, are not paying taxes. Some of them, are, quite a few of them, are based in Africa, for example. Yeah. And if they were to pay their taxes in the countries in which they operate. Those countries would be doing a lot better. I think so that is that, that kind is, of practical that, example of how that, this that could is be a, easily that is, fixed. A, that is a practical example, and then there's also, I mean, you look at some of the super wealthy, like Bill and Melinda Gates. They started a foundation, and they're doing something. What I would like to see is more cooperation between these foundations and the states. You know, we, you have a lot of these private do-gooding foundations, but there needs to be more cooperation amongst them, between them, with places like the multilateral development agencies, like the World Bank, and with countries. So there's there's a lot to be said for cooperating. Go on, Sally, you All take All right, this let's talk about another story in The Independent. Uh, optimism is starting to slip again. Uh, a CBI poll finds, interestingly, the poll was taken at the end of last year. A lot's happened since the end of last year. We're in the third trading week of 2016, and it's been nothing but... Uh, Bloodletting, it would seem. I think we've uh, way in excess of three trillion dollars have been wiped off the um, value of, of global stock markets. Ten percent um, in the U.S. and in Asia alone. So this is this is big. So 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 fast new seat belts, and especially as the as the U.K. fiscal year ends in April, um, <laughs> happily, can, the, the downdraft is actually on the on the on the current financial year. Uh, Ban Ki-moon is in the United Arab Emirates to launch the UN's uh, aid report. He wants more money from uh, Gulf countries, from generally rich Islamic states. And he says, let's tax football as well, because we need more money to help people around the world. Well, I think that's a very good idea. And when you see, and he's been uh, running in open doors in, in, um, in Dubai. Yeah. Um, and and, and, and uh, when you look at sort of what quite a few of these um, of these Gulf countries do in terms of of, of, of giving financial aid, yes, that that's they're, they're doing a lot and they will be doing more. And taxing football is a very good thing. Think of these huddled masses that we've seen last year going across Europe because they had you know Syria, they had no place to stay in Syria. They had Iraq, um, Afghanistan. Um, somebody needs to help them, and um, surely you can afford 10% on your football ticket to help them. Talking of new yeah. taxes, yeah. Uh, the Guardian front page is dedicated to a new sugar tax to be, tax to be introduced across uh, the NHS in hospitals, etc. So basically, if you're in a waiting room and you're going to get a bottle of sh a sugary drink, it will cost you a lot more. A good idea? I think it's a very good idea because essentially the NHS walks the talk. They say, and they're right, they say we're consuming part of our obesity crisis in this country and in other countries. is not just fat, it's also that we consume way too much sugar. So yes, yes, let's, let's, let's walk the talk. And, and, and if, you want, if you feel that you need to drink a very sugary drink, yes, let's, let's, let's charge for more. I'm assuming the money they make from this will be ploughed back into the NHS. No, you I'm just reading so, this, but right? What, it says it, it will use the 20 to 40 million pounds a year from the new tax that it's expected to raise to improve the health of its own 1.3 million strong workforce. So I'm going to be helping to improve the work, the, 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 the health of my nurse, which actually... Now, you want to do that. You yeah. want to do that. Yeah. When you look at how understaffed hospitals are, you want these poorly overworked people to be well. But the one thing I want to say is that the cover here, it's like pop art. It's the most beautiful cover I've seen in a long time. This, this Guardian, this is the NHS cover. You want to write an article for The Guardian, right? You're just <laughs> sweetening, <laughs> sweetening the deal with The Guardian's editor. Cornelia, thank you very much indeed. Lovely to see you. Thank Have a you. lovely week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello there. After a wintry feeling weekend, we've got a fairly wintry start to the new working week as well. Here was a scene sent in from Derbyshire by one of our weather watchers yesterday. You can see the lying snow there. Many places still having a bit of lying snow around. There could be